Okay, the uh, first thing you need to do is make sure you have your microcopter turned on in place where it has a clear view of the sky. And you want to start your microcopter tool as you normally would. And we can see here that we're connected, no errors. And to configure the camera, we want it to match the GPS time. So we'll click this button here. And we see that we've got eight satellites connected. Uh, they're fairly healthy. And we see this area here, we have the time. Uh, this is about 5.36 p.m. Um, based on the, uh, the UTC clock, which all the GPSs, uh, I'm sorry, all the GPS satellites are set to. And we want to link this time to our camera. Okay, so what we want to do uh, is make sure the time on the camera matches the time uh, on the GPS that's on the microcopter. So we need to turn on our camera and go into our menu function. And we see it's getting ready to turn 47 seconds after the hour. And I wait until the exact moment and set the clock. So this is actually, you'll see, 1247, which is set uh, for Central Standard Time. And the UTC code is based on Greenwich Mean Time, and it is uh, 5.47 p.m. there. So there's a five-hour difference. Uh, this five-hour difference equates to 1,800 seconds, and that's a function that we can set in the software. You'll need to take the SD card that you use in your microcopter and configure it so that it's also recording GPX data. You do that by opening uh, the directory that uh, contains your SD card and there'll be a settings.ini file and, and this will not exist until you've flown your microcopter at least once with the SD card uh, in the Navi board. So you can open this settings.ini with notepad and when you open this at default um, it'll be zero, but if you want it to record GPX logging, which you have to have set for Palantir to work, you enter a number here, and that 500 means is it will record up to 500 GPX log files to the SD card. It'll also uh, log 500 KML files uh, to the SD card. Um, you don't need those for Palantir, uh, but I kind of like to keep them turned on. We have the hexacopter setting up on its end right now with the front of the hexacopter, which is the red post pointing up. Uh, and you want the flash on your camera to be in alignment. In other words, the top of the camera to be in line with the front of the hexacopter. And when you're flying it, you want the camera to be pointed as uh, straight down as possible. Once you've flown your microcopter or other UAV, you'll need to copy the photographs and telemetry logs to uh, your computer. Here I have a uh, photos directory, which has, I think, 21 photographs in it, and then a telemetry directory that has the GPX file that is associated with those photographs. Uh, you don't have to use these directories, it's just the way I set them up to help remember how things go. So next, if you haven't done it already, you need to download the Palantir software. We click here, we'll download the software, and I want to copy the Java jar to the directory. You only have to do this once, and it does not have to be installed in this location for it to work. It does require Java to open them. So the first thing we're going to do is go load JPEG files. We'll navigate to where our photographs are. We'll select all. There's 21 files loaded. Next, we're going to load the GPX file. And that's right here. Now, before we can match these files, we need to set a couple of options. Uh, the main option is 
is the time difference. Uh, you'll remember that we set the camera that uh, I flew to five hours difference than the GPS time on the microcopter. So five hours happens to be 18,000 seconds. So we'll enter 18,000 there. And we'll also enter a compass declination of five degrees. And you can find that out by going uh, to a number of websites. Uh, NOAA has one and uh, there's, there's several. You can just Google compass declination and it'll give you the, the declination for the area you're flying. Next, uh, you set a number here for the maximum size of the images that are exported uh, to Google Earth. Uh, you pick a higher number, your files will be larger. You pick a lower number, and the files will be smaller. And all this is described in the document file that comes with the program. So we'll click Done. And then we're going to go to Match. And this can take a little while. Um, looks like it did it pretty quick, actually. And now we'll go to Export All to KMZ. This is the option most people are going to choose for exporting from this software. Uh, you also have an export to JPEG world file, which is uh, very good for using in uh, GIS software like ArcGIS. And you have these options down here that are for exporting the data into like a photogrammetry suite. Uh, we're going to do the KMZ option, and we'll call it sample data, and we'll export that. And this normally takes a couple of seconds also and it will create a file it should appear right in this spot any second now okay so it exported the data you can double click on this sample that sample data and Google Earth will zoom in on the location that the photographs were photographed at So here's a strip of the data, and you'll see some of the photographs are in alignment, some are turned a little bit. Uh, this is because the microcopter um, turned when it was taking photographs, so it actually adjusts the photograph uh, to that shape. And you'll see that there's some things that just don't quite line up, uh, and that's because uh, the GPS on the microcopter is only accurate to about 10 meters. So any one of these image tiles could be skewed uh, up to 10 meters in any direction. Uh, generally, they're not skewed by that much, but in Palantir, we have an option for adjusting this data. And that's this offset value north and offset value east. So you can add a positive number in meters to move the data uh, north. And uh, the same with, with east or west. You enter a negative number if you want to move west. So if, you, if we did those options, we want to rematch the data and then re-export. But in general, that is the basics of running Palantir. Thank you very much.